The progressive port of Bluff now has a new addition to its skyline, a meat loader that operates in all weathers. As the outlet for Southland's fat lamb industry, Bluff is one of New Zealand's biggest meat ports. Until the loader came into operation, bad weather meant costly delays. In the shed, the meat takes a quick trip along the belt and into the slings. This ingenious device first lifts the carcasses up to the top of the shed. Then right over the roof and down to the ship's hold at the rate of over 2,000 an hour. This is the first of five all-weather loaders, costing a total of 600,000 pounds. By spanning the wharf, it doesn't interfere with other loading operations. An operator regulates the speed of the carcasses according to instructions from the refrigerated depths. Although an expensive investment, there's the definite advantage of eliminating costly weather delays. When the five loaders are operational, loading time will be cut in half, thus speeding up ship turnaround. Bluff is the first New Zealand port to install an all-weather meat loader, but the idea is spreading and the Port of London authorities are considering building similar units to unload the meat at the other end. Along the west coast of New Zealand's South Island, a fast-changing shoreline weaves down from Farewell Spit. Once a year, an expedition follows 18 miles of lonely beach to service the unmanned lighthouse at Kaharangi Point. Guided by local farmers, the only people who really know the beach, men of the lighthouse service take a yearly gamble with six rivers and the sea. Also in the convoy are a Ministry of Works jeep and contractors from Collingwood. To get along stretches of narrow beach, the expedition must catch the lowest ebb before spring tides. Where the sand is firm and the shore wide, vehicles get pushed along to reach and cross the last river before high tides can trap them. Hold up at the Anaweka. Patches of soft sand pockmark the river mouth. If a vehicle bogs a wheel, it can be pulled out, but it all takes time, and the tide steadily spreading further up the beach. More delay. Last year, the trucks rode on top of these rocks, which were covered by eight feet of sand. Jelly can pretty quickly make more room for the convoy, but holes must be filled in by muscle and time. last and most dangerous river before the lighthouse, Big River, looks easy, but it's treacherous. Its rapid rise has in the past claimed a couple of vehicles.
river and mud to safety on the other side. This is the end of traveling along the beach. For the jeep only, there's a tough mile-long climb up to the lighthouse. Two at a time, 250-pound acetylene cylinders are jeeped up the barely formed track. Lost the track and over the edge. full cylinders, 16 to be replaced and four as spares, must be crashed through flax and scrubbed to the lighthouse before west coast weather again makes the track impassable. Sixteen cylinders coupled to a main feed line will supply the light for another year. Kaharangi was originally a manned lighthouse, where a small community of three keepers and their families lived until 1926, when the light was converted to automatic. Around the tower, pasture and garden have reverted to bush, and except for a few days of the year, deer graze unworried. When the mutton's gone, venison's a welcome change. There's still one more day's work to do at the light. Also, wood must be cut for next year's fires and the roof of the old house repaired to keep out drenching rain. But until the rain stops, there's not much to do except eat, shoot, slap sand flies and worry about getting out again when the job's finished. Many days of heavy rain have swollen streams to new rivers. Violent seas have banked up floodwaters and the rivers will be full of new traps. While the maintenance men are finishing their work on the lighthouse, the drivers go to see what the chances are of getting out later. barely passable a few days ago, it's now become a mile-wide torrent. Family and friends may well wonder what has delayed the men at Kahurangi. As the weather slowly clears, work on the light speeds up. Gas mantles are checked and the burnt-out one changed. While one burns, there are, in case of failure, three reserve mantles waiting to automatically take its place. The last section is painted, and in another day or another week, depending on the weather, the men of the lighthouse service will follow the long beach back to home. <laughs>